So hello everyone, good to see you. Uh, we will be starting in just a minute. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Okay, while we wait for others to join us, I think let's make a start. Uh, let's not wait any longer. We have a special session for you prepared today to answer some questions, to get into some of the details we haven't yet discussed. We have uh, a special guest who will lead this session, Dr. Massimiliano Fusari, who you all know because he made uh, plenty of comments on your exercises, especially on the visual aspects of online meetings and online meeting moderation. And this is a chance for him to go into some more details and reflect on what he's seen and what he's discussed with you over the last couple of weeks. So without further ado, I'm going to first uh, hand over to Massimiliano, and then I'm looking forward to your questions and comments, which you can post in the chat or raise your hand and we give you the floor. But first of all, Massimiliano, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Just a second, I'll try to, to activate my presentation, share screen. We just try, it should be working. So, can I just have, uh, can you just confirm that it's, the presentation is running? Thank you. So, welcome everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Um, welcome to this session on uh, trying to expand on the digital and visual components of communication with some do's and don'ts to discuss. Um, you have met me already, Katharina introduced me, Massimiliano is too long, Max works great. So the key point I want to address today is that if diplomacy is communication, what does that imply? Whatever we do is about communication. This is the, the theory I will try to address and discuss today. And that is, uh, of course, has a clear impact on when we do online meetings, but uh, as many of you actually deal with diplomacy, I will just try to uh, in reframe this notion within the diplomatic context. So I'm going to refer to a well-established model of communication, um, and I'm going to go through this in detail. So when right now I'm talking, I am the source, and uh, the channel through which I'm communicating is my voice. And uh, here is a space that we could contextualize in further in detail. I mean, you have my voice, you see also my, you see also my behavior, and that is part of communication as well, as we will see in a bit. Um, but, and that contributes to my message. My message to you is much more than my words. And uh, my message to you right now is not only my words, clearly, but it's also my posture, the background, and uh, the style through which I'm talking to you. The fact that I'm using a bow tie, the fact that the, the light is coming this way, and so many more things. You as on the other side of the communication uh, flow, are actually receiving that. But you're also communicating back to us. And we will go through this uh, more in detail with the Q&A, with your question, but that's when we are discussing, when we have a dialogue, that is what happens. And that communication, that feedback can be in many, many ways. And this is the first point I want to raise for our online meetings. If I start, if right now Katarina uh, started yawning, <laughs> even though she, <laughs> that would have an impact on the communication, that will be communication. If I answer the phone, if I got 
a phone call, which I just did, and I answer the phone call, that would be part of a communication exchange because communication is not only what I'm saying, and so my voice and what you're receiving, the message is the feedback, is the context, is the noise, both internal and external. Noise, it doesn't mean, doesn't necessarily refer to the fact that we might hear some background noise. Noise can be some problems in connection, can be many different things at the same time. They can be internal and they can be external. And one point I want to touch on, which I think is key in our, in, in all kinds of communication, particularly so with online communication, is that the more distance we are, the more complex communication is. Because we have, because all the var variables, all the noise that might happen is actually, is actually, expanded and that is particularly true when we have multicultural or transcultural issues i might be saying something uh, i might be stretching and sketching my here right now this way and that in some uh, in some contexts might have uh, might be perceived extremely negatively i remember one of my best friend a greek one i never knew whether this is true or not a greek one i would always say hi to her like this and she told me that this in greeks in greece is a very bad message so the key point is that the more distance we are the more complex communication is and that communication is about emotion we might be arguing very effectively what we feel what we think if I project something negative or positive to you, that overruns and overrules any intended and uh, rational point I'm trying to address. And we need to keep this in mind throughout any of the communication uh, contests we are dealing with. And the, but the point is the more distant we are, the more these issues are going to shape reception. And the perceived message is content by context. And this is what we are going to expand on right now. Content by context. Content is what I'm trying to say, but context is everything which is around me and is shaping my communication. So the first point I want to touch on is composition. I'm sure many of you have already seen these wonderful resources that Diplo craft for you. And there are some best practices and some recommendation on how to frame, <clears throat> sorry, on how to frame yourself on the screen. So what is good, what is bad? I discussed in my previous intervention uh, a few weeks ago with the Katarina and Stephanie, uh, the rule of, uh, well, the golden ratio, the rule of one third. And again, we have a very clear example of how that can be implemented. I should actually place myself here, but I think at the center of the stage is fine as well. As we see here, she is framing herself right the center of the stage. One thing I want to expand on is direction of, uh, of the communication. If we are dealing with mobile communication, and that is often, often the case, that can happen in a multitude of different contexts. My collapse on might be, my, sorry, my connection might be collapsing anytime. Uh, I might had uh, to, actually use my phone. Uh, I fully agree as a photographer that we should keep it horizontal and that vertical should be used as a very last resource. I'm also conscious that uh, uh, it's much more complex and not always working to keep it horizontal. So rather than making such a black and white, good or bad, just a position, 
horizontal versus vertical, I would actually argue that the key point is how you communicate and the authenticity, authenticity and consistency of the message. You can break the rules. I think someone has been raising the issue in the, in the form. You can break the rules. You can ban the rules on what is good, what is not, what is preferable to what should be done as long as how you project yourself is part of a consistent and perceived as authentic message. And that is the key point. You might read my posture, my tone, and my behavior as authentic or not authentic. The key point is trying to project that and behave like you meant that. And that is the key point. We are trying to communicate, to project an idea of ourselves. That is what we intend to communicate rather than just being the result of a number of coincidences. And you might look at me and hear my voice and make a connection between the tone of my voice and my movement. Do, this should build on you consistency. You could connect what, how I'm behaving with what I'm saying. And I would say, because I'm not acting, uh, this might be perceived as honest and consistent and true. And Truthness is absolutely key to when we communicate, always and particularly so online. Much more than truthfulness is being perceived as such. Let's go to technical details, which is something I've seen in a multitude of uh, cases. This is one of the cases where also as uh, clearly shared by the resources offered to you by Diplo, this is very little to ban. This is absolutely wrong. This is simply put absolutely wrong. Let's go on specifics, just without being too boring, but two things we must keep in mind. All sources of light have a temperature warm and cold, 1K Kelvin, 10,000 Kelvin. From warm to cold. Natural light, natural light has a temperature that changes throughout the day. That's why we see, one time when see, we see some colors in the morning and some other colors at the end of the day. Keep this in mind. We will go into details with that at a later stage. But this is just uh, setting the stage with a multitude of different aspects. What does that mean? This is a picture I shoot yesterday. Nothing impressive. I'm perfectly aware, but that is not the point. I shoot this picture with two different temperature of light. And everything is identical, just the temperature of the light is different. And I'm showing you how, I hope you can see how different, different temperature of the light. All this was in a dark room with a little, just using this, and I can set this with different temperature. So 3,200 Kelvin and 5,600 Kelvin. The result, I hope it's clear, even though we are seeing it on a, on a screen. Cold war, cold war. And that has an impact on how we project ourselves and what we communicate. Tools. Photography literally means writing with light. Without light, there is no visual communication. And without visual communication, there is little space for our online meetings. What do we need? Any source of light, 
as long as we are able to control it and use it as part of our intended communication. We're going to tell some this in a moment. Also, I just introduce you to this tripod, source of light, very cheap combination, very cheap. I'm perfectly aware we are not in inviting you to buy anything, but again, it takes very little, not only any source of light, natural light, any source of light like the lamp here, but also something a little bit more articulated like this one, which can set the temperature of the light to what you like. And a normal tripod. Mm, one of my favorite topics, background. Be aware of the background you are using. We are content by context. This is context. We can be perfectly dressed with a bow tie or a tie like a gentleman here, but what we have around us, what we have behind us breaks everything. So taking a few examples of case, <laughs> examples of different backgrounds. And I personally don't like the BBC top left because the lines are killing my eye my eyes uh, clearly i don't i don't like the one bottom left with the gentleman with the, with <laughs> with the dresses being dry up uh, wonderful i mean i understand my this space is very limited uh, and that's why i'm trying i'm sitting up i'm standing up because i don't want to show you what is lying on the floor because that is the limitation i'm working with and I can show you later, but I can, this is the limitation. So try to work in a way that is consistent and targeted to communicate something. You're not seeing anything that is inappropriate here, hopefully. And if you have space, if you have opportunities, this is the thing I like the most. Um, in the direction of the recording, uh, the fact that she's a musician, we have books in the background, but they are not so taking over. They look like and make you feel this is part of the environment. And we have a piano in the back because she is a piano, 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 piano player. Sorry, I've just finished teaching for hours. <laughs> a piano player. So again, just try to project and use elements that speak about yourself and support the point you are trying to make. Blur, unblur, real fake backgrounds. Again, I'm perfectly aware we play with what we have and we have to make the most of what we have. This is a challenge, but it's a challenge we must face. And we must face it in a way that is effective and strategic. So I would argue that as long as the background add or make a point about who you are and what you want to communicate, then you can use it. Uh, I like the background here, the one from the gentleman for Maria, no, I don't think it's him. Well, on, on Mars and the space, but what is going that background to say about myself? That is not my field, that is not my passion. And if I use that background, I would be communicating something that doesn't relate to me in any way. And that is a huge problem that can be used against us and against what we are trying to communicate. Remember, this is going to be your mantra for today. Receive communication is context by content. This is a colleague of mine who contributed to a class a couple of days ago. And I thought it was very interesting because, because it made me think once more, and many of the many of the questions you raise is about 
multicultural communication, transcultural communication, all this. Is there something wrong here? Not to me, but a naked figure, even as a painting, might create issues. And so we must be aware of every little detail we have in our background. I like that painting, but that is my sense of beauty. And uh, it's not even an issue of multiculturalism or transculturalism. Uh, if someone else doesn't like that painting, it's going to create an issue because communication is emotion. Posture. <clears throat> Posture, standing, nothing like this, nothing like this, standing, placing yourself naturally, as naturally as you can in the background. And uh, you don't have to, again, to show what is outside and beyond the camera. That's a key point. What is important is anything and everything that is on camera. All the rest is secondary. If not, if you don't see it, then it's not there. And that's a key point. But you could see, and I hope you appreciate how she's in full posture and standing very well. And that comes out on the screen and that projects emotion and a clear approach to reality. And this is how we are perceived online. Me complace estar con ustedes para destacar los elementos más importantes que debe tener un moderador antes de la reunión. La moderación efectiva comienza antes del evento real y el moderador debe estar bien preparado. Mi intención es referirme a cinco puntos esenciales. Punto uno, preparando al equipo. Como moderador de la reunión puede ser el conductor o el director del equipo que organiza la reunión. Incluso si no lo eres. This is one of your colleagues from a previous version of uh, this training or another training. But anyway, a training at the Diplo Foundation. Let's test what we have just discuss together by reference to this video which is which doesn't have anything challenging does it is not it doesn't rely on anything incredible it's a desk is a plant on the background on his right and a lamp on his left these two elements frame the space and actually work very well so composition background Lighting, posture, tick, 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 tick. Well done, Jorge. What would you improve on this screen? Let's have a conversation about this during the Q&A. But keep your, ask yourself, what could we improve here, if anything? Remember, wrapping up, the perceived message is the result of content by context, which translates into composition by lighting, by background, by posture. And the key point is to whom? Audiences. Many of your questions in the Google form were around how should we talk in order to make a good impression in this context or in that context, or how do we manage issues in the in official meetings and so on and so forth. The key point, uh, again, is how do we manage our audiences, particularly when these audiences are mixed. I'm talking to a number of you, I don't know how many you are right now, uh, but you all, possibly you all, don't know each other, you all come from different contexts. And it's not only a question of geography or the fact that maybe 
some of you are to are right now are in uh, almost are, are seeing me at 11 in the evening or at eight in the morning. Our mood, our feelings, everything that we keep with us that is part of our history is part of what defines who we are. And so the issues of audiences is key and we should be addressing that all the time. We can solve it. We can try to navigate on best scenarios because that is the only option we have. Many of your questions were about multicultural or mixed audiences. And again, uh, having worked for more than 20 years across different contexts, different cultural tradition, different religions, different, different many things, I am particularly uh, sensitive to that and interested to that. The key point is that that is something that cannot be solved with one formula working for everything. We must try to picture who might be on the other side and just try to engage their expectation as much as we can. Because communication and message is context by content. We can work on these two variables the best way we can. We cannot control everything, and, uh, but we can try to be effective and constructive and proactive in what we plan. And we work on this with the wrap up uh, and lesson learned. This is again another colleague from my university, and this is how we had our meeting. You see, um, you see myself. I'm in a different posture, in different position, because that was a very informal meeting between two colleagues. But again, he was not. Uh, he was not uh, delivering any any talk. We were just trying to review and discuss a couple of issues for one of the classes, and again. Here, there is plenty to improve. And uh, but again, we need to work with what we can. Maybe in this case, a background would work great. A, a digital background, a fake background work, would work greatly because maybe this is the only space where he can work. We are heading towards the end of this contribution. I call this next as a lucky feature, because I was up getting ready to shoot a video about what I recommend as best practices, and then I received a video about best practices on Zoom by a, by a colleague of mine, not a colleague of mine who is a wonderful filmmaker. Okay, so tip number one is to try and use lights that are of the same color temperature. Now, if we look over here at this lamp, you can see that it's a lot more orange than the light outside, which is a lot more blue. And so what we want to try and do is keep them to a consistent temperature. Now, that could just mean turning off your indoor lights and lamps so you just have window light. Or if you're a nerd like me, you can change their color. Hey, Siri, turn the lights to white. Okay. And by having everything, at the same like temperature, you get much better skin tones. It looks much more flattering. But the second tip here is you don't want windows behind you because look what happens. The camera just can't handle that difference in brightness. So instead, try and put windows at your side. Just by switching like this, all of a sudden, we get a much better image. And tip number three is to avoid really harsh light coming in through the window. Check out what happens when I let that sunlight go right on my face. Ooh, it really gives the camera a hard time and that harsh light is not flattering at all. So by closing a window or using a blind or a shear to soften it, you're gonna get a much better look right away. Doing just these three things, keeping a consistent light temperature, putting the window to the front or side of you and avoiding any harsh light falling on you, it's gonna make a very big difference. And I was so lucky. It arrived to me yesterday morning. So lucky feature, three rules. Keeping one color for lighting, you don't need to have Alexa or anything like that. You just need to manage the color of light 
in a way that is consistent. Two, light on your side. And you see, this gives depth and three dimension, three dimension on my face. And three, avoid harsh lighting. Wrapping up, pending issues and questions. One, what is multi-transcultural digital communication? I suspect this is going to come up a lot with the questions, so I will leave this on the space. But again, we don't need to discuss, we don't need necessary to go into multi or transcultural communication, even basic aspect, like being from the same village, uh, same age and things like that. If one of the two has just been left by the wife, I suspect he will not take jokes very lightly. So again, we don't need to move across and between culture. It might be just the mood of the people we are dealing with. And we will touch this. I touch on this with, in terms of jokes, and we will remind you about this in a bit. So again, try to picture who is going on the other side and how those on the other side might be receiving and decoding whatever you communicate. Another question, how to plan meetings. I like to, to use one of my favorite quotes. When did Noah build the ark? Before the rain. So plan in advance. Plan in advance all the time. Whatever we do, we must plan in advance. That's, on, that's our only option for, manage, for actually planning and managing meetings. And this is again, touch on some of the questions that you raise. For instance, how to politely keep a presenter to time and appropriate style. Katrina could just tell me right now, Max, you are actually a little bit theatrical or stick to time or things like that. And again, depending on the context, content and context, depending on the context of our relation and on the aim of the meeting, I might be reacting and she might be dealing with me very differently. I show you the image of this change with me, between me and my colleague. We were talking off records. So again, in, like in many of the cases that you raise, there is not a single way to deal with this. There is not a all resolving formula. You need to be, to ask yourself, to put yourself in the shoes of the other people and trying to deal with that. I think politeness is always very effective. Sometimes not even being harsh or unpolite can solve a problem. And I'm pretty sure you can think of many instances in which uh, whatever the way we were trying to tell that a presenter to stick on time, they will not follow us. Again, some of the issue. What is diplomacy? Is this content or form? Content or context? It is both at the same time. Diplomacy is, is content. We are talking diplomacy. We are talking issues on diplomacy, but it's also a form. We can be diplomatic in the way we talk. Keep this in mind and use this as a source for your communication and for, for your <clears throat> next activities. How to stick to rules and guidelines. For instance, share documents and deadlines. If, the, if, you are, if we all share approaches, guidances, and best practices, the most effective way to make it successful for a team is to abide by what is being discussed and being negotiated and being agreed on. And again, that is one of these cases in which online is not different from offline communication. That applies to all contexts. <sighs> 
flexibility and adaptability. Katharina was uh, late on purpose two weeks ago. I, <laughs> we were laughing about this because I do some of this, of the same things on purpose uh, with my students. I was actually, we were planning of me starting answering a phone call while we were talking. We thought we, what, we better stick to a more, much more formal approach for today. But again, I've always, and that's why new plan, get yourself always a plan B. Plan B is possibly one of the most important things, always. If you have your agenda, get yourself on the left column, get yourself an alternative planning on the right if any of the major points changes. So you can manage any change because things change all the time. Do you know this? I know this. Formal versus informal communication, for instance, joking. That might be very complicated to solve and be solved. Uh, again, I would stick, I suggest this in a previous, in a previous uh, comment on, on one of the exercise, stick on the safe side. Joke only when you are, when you have, when joking on plane, might be something you add to a relation that is already well established. If you are unsure, do not joke. Stick on the safe side. That is my recommendation. Again, it's up to you to assess people on the other side. In short, we go to war with the army we have. This is from Napoleon. I'm not inviting you to start any war, but it's just a kind and gentle reminder that I'm perfectly aware we all deal with what we have. Right now, you are seeing things at a certain height. You don't want to see what is below that line in this room. This is the only space I have to deal with, to present this today. So we go to war with the army we have. End of story. How to follow up on meetings? Again, some of the question, I hope you appreciate how to plan, how to manage, how to follow up on meetings. All this really depends on the topic, the context, and the many multiple variables that we need to engage and deal with all the time. Happy to discuss the issue with, by addressing specific case studies. Takeaways, hooray. Virtual meetings are meetings. Simply put, virtual meetings, online meetings are meetings. I cannot start answering the phone call or just talking to my wife, entering or anything like that. I am in a meeting. I represent not only myself, but also my, my part, my whoever I'm, uh, I'm talking for. And the fact that I'm online is still, I'm still part of that meeting. We saw that with reference to the UN uh, General Assembly in our previous conversation. But again, virtual meetings, online meetings are meetings. So behave, let's all behave like we were in a meeting because we are in a meeting. Therefore, in case this is not clear, Plan, plan, plan in advance. Rehearse, rehearse, rehearse in advance all the time. Because things will always go wrong with some problem. We will have a change in agenda. All these things happen. So you shouldn't be focusing on what we are addressing. That should be part of what you have in your heart. And you know by heart. You should just be able to be immediately responding to the changes we are going through. In case I was not clear, practice, practice, practice. Again, plan, 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 rehearse, 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 practice, practice, practice. Check, check, check. Because you are what you project. Context by content. 
I am not only how I talk, how I represent myself, what you see around me, and how I play my character. And to do that, I use different tools of communication with the audiences. And I use different style of communication with the audiences, depending on how I project it. I behave this way in one way with my students. I behave in another way with the diplomats I train. I behave with you in differently again. Apply intelligently the same rules of face-to-face -face communication. That is the takeaway together with digital is not virtual. If I declare war online, I'm still declaring war. If I barb as I'm talking with a diplomat, I'm still offending that diplomat and that country. And it's not important whether I was online, offline, whatever. I'm still behaving like that. I'm still in the meeting. Thank you. Over to you, Katrina. Thank you, Massimiliano. Uh... It was a very, very full and round presentation. There's just literally nothing left that you didn't touch. However, we had a very interesting discussion um, in the chat on some of the aspects that you mentioned. There are four main areas, I would say. There was a question on authenticity. There was a comment on background. And um, there was a, a discussion on planning. What I found, uh, however, what received most attention for now and what I want to put to you for now is uh, questions on lighting. So there was some attention on, on the difference between uh, very warm and very cold lighting. And in the chat, there was basically a question, is one preferable to the other? Um, there was a comment by Annie that warm lighting might be better. And then there was a question, um, which lighting is better. And then we had an interesting in vivo experiment where um, Rickson mentioned that Dragana might be having too much light coming at her from the front. And then she changed a small feature in her room by drawing the curtain, less light from the front, as was also mentioned in the video that you showed. And uh, the situation changed. And in the chat, many people said, yeah, this is actually an improvement. Uh, for example, I'm kind of playing with that also. Because You're borderline. Yeah, exactly, because I have a light source in, in the back of me. I think it still works, but if I do that, it's exactly. So borderline, but also depending on, on what is in the room. That was one of the things that kind of came from the chat as well. We have to work with what we have. And then there was a comment from Rickson regarding your lighting, Massimiliano, because he's obviously uh, rightfully observing that the lighting for you comes very strongly from one side, which means one side of your face is more lit than the other side. And he's wondering if that's uh, a problem or if it's a feature and what you would comment on that. And we have a couple of raised hands, but I think I'm going to give you the floor for now to address this uh, Lighting question, Massimiliano. Okay, please, please, I'm begging you all, be patient if I forget to answer all of this. There are so many topics. I will happy to, I'm, I'm happy to go back to them, but please be patient. Um, uh, it's not a feature, I work with what I have. Uh, this is a small room, my light come from there. Um, That's, that is the only other light, and uh, I didn't want, I could have used this to bounce the light against the wall, and that I would have some light on that part of my face. Um, I could have done it. I didn't think it was uh, that relevant. I still think I'm visible, um, even though in half an hour I won't be. Um, Temperature of light, I think as long as the color of light is consistent, so I don't have a very blue light here and a very orange white light here, it's fine. Um, usually, depend, it also depends a lot on the color of your skin. I'm very light, I'm very white, and so blue might be working much better than, than orangish, otherwise I turn completely red which is what the color I turn into when I stay under the sun for 20 minutes. Um, if you are much darker color, or if your skin is, again, as a different tone, then you can play differently. But as a general rule, I'm very much in favor of going to war with the army we have. So again, you don't need 
billions of things you don't need Alexa to Alexa to give you uh, different tone colors. Uh, just do with what you can. Uh, anything else, uh, Katarina, on lighting? Did yeah, I forget uh, anything? Uh, the difference between cold and warm. Oh, no, you addressed it. But I have two more things from the chat from before, which is uh, the question on authenticity and how we make sure we come across as authentic. Uh, you mentioned this at the very beginning of your presentation, and then there was a question on that. So I wanted to perhaps bring it back into the discussion to hear maybe just three quick points on, on this question of authenticity and coming across as authentic. I, d I don't think it's... it's there is one rule to coming out, coming through as authentic. I think you should be authentic, and that is a good starting point. But again, depending on your audience, and sorry, depending on the audience you have, and depending on how they are going to absorb you, even the most authentic person might come out as inauthentic. I'm pretty confident, and that is always the case. Some of you will think I'm just. Uh, playing and this is not me and I'm not going to answer that question <laughs> um, it can I mean I don't think there is one way one solution to be perceived as authentic the only thing we can deal with is trying to project authenticity which comes from behaving as you think and again, and being extremely aware of the context you are in. Again, I would not behave like this if I were training uh, ambassadors. And, but even for instance, even if I were training ambassador in the UK, I would behave differently from training ambassador in Italy because there are tradition, there are different ways of behaving, there are different styles, different ways of using the language of jokes the kind of jokes you can use just to make the counterpart understand that you know their codes, the linguistic and cultural codes. Did I answer, Katrina? Um, I think you did. Anything else? Uh, there was an interesting discussion on feedback for Jorge, the video you played. Uh, Rickson suggested he should have worn um, a shirt to cover up some wrink, uh, a jacket to cover up some wrinkles in his shirt. Um, Raul said that that wasn't appropriate for for the context. He would have come across as too formal. So that was quite okay. interesting. Um, Sorry, but I we leave that for later because I have uh, two raised hands. One of them is from, from Raul and I think a good moment to bring him into the discussion. So Raul, if you're ready, please go ahead. Thank you, uh, Katharina. I would have yielded to Kanika, but just because uh, she, she had her hand up first, but just for continuity, I am going to go. So do forgive me, uh, Kanika, on that. Thank you, Dr. Masiliano, for your presentation. Um, I just have some brief comments and one is basically uh, thank you for outlining the ideals for which we should strive and acknowledging at the same time that access to and sometimes procuring resources can be a challenge. I think for me, perception is not often the reality, as many persons might be, as you said, going to war with the army and the resources we have, having counted the cost of doing um, the battle. I think for me, a key takeaway from this is unlocking the power of visual storytelling and sort of as we talk about having the competitive advantage, I think this uh, session today is about giving us the virtual edge and perhaps applying some of the same methods to other aspects of our work and not just confining it to uh, online meetings because I can easily see doing a presentation and instead of just starting with a bland sort of introduction, I can get visual and perhaps infuse some storytelling aspects in my presentation to kind of create a different atmosphere, get person engaged and involved, and then transition into, of course, what would have been linked to what the, the visual story perhaps was related to. So thank you very much. Uh, Ro, uh, yes, I never use once reality because that is something we cannot control. We, what we can do is trying to manage the perception by projecting something about ourselves, which is content, 
context, background. Again, we have very limited possibilities in order to influence the reality, but we can work on projecting something. So thanks for getting that point very clearly. Just wanted to reaffirm that point. Thank you, sir. Well, and then over uh, to Kanika, and again, apologies that I didn't see your hand um, first, but now the floor is yours. Thank you very much. It's no problem. As long as I get a chance to express myself, I'm grateful. Um, I have to turn off my, my video because I'm having bandwidth issues, but I think it was a very, very, very good presentation and it was very useful. Uh, my only question is this, as it relates to when you asked a question about the video, Jorge's video, and what would you improve? For me, I realized that what I thought was that it goes to the issue of presenting styles and positioning yourself in a meeting. So both you and, and Jorge, for me, seem very distant. You seem very away from the camera. And for me, I got a feeling, I don't know if it's because we're on lockdown and we don't get to interact with people a lot, but for me, it felt very distant. Um, and so I was wondering if it is that, is that, is that a personality trait of mine where because I'm more personable where I wanted to see people up close and personal or probably for different meeting styles, you position yourself differently um, depending on how the meeting is. But just as a recap, I found that for me, um, the position of the gentleman was very far. And so I felt it wasn't personable. And so that was my question to you. Is it different meeting positions for different meetings or is it, it could just be my personal taste as to how I prefer to see presenters before me? I, I, I think you raise a very relevant point and, and I do apologize. I don't think I have the answer. Uh, this is one of those things that can be solved universally. I'm not going, I mean, I think that in the case of the gentleman, uh, I think he, uh, what I could feel was that he was extremely tense. And uh, I would assume that the way he framed with the two elements on the two side was consciously or unconsciously one way to actually cr craft a frame of security into which he could communicate. Again, I don't know the gentleman. I'm just assuming from reading the scene. Kanika, like yourself, I'm very much a person, <laughs> a people person. I suffer like hell being stuck in the lockdown. Um, I, I, I would like to have my base over there into the frame. But again, that would tell a lot about me, but wouldn't be, it wouldn't be proper for this context. That will make the scene less formal, more informal, but I think I'm already quite a lot informal in the way I'm, I might be perceived from, for a number of aspects. So again, uh, whether, whether we can, uh, we can uh, how we project or perceive, project and perceive um, distance, of closeness, uh, it's very much dependent on the person communicating and the audience, as well as the cultural, social, human, personal uh, aspects of the communication itself and the mood. Again, um, I have a terrible headache. That's why I'm talking so much, so. <laughs> Thank you. Um... Well, I want to read two more comments, but there did no need to reply to them, I think. And then there's one last question, uh, which comes uh, from Ginger. The two comments I want to read just to acknowledge them, because I think they're really well phrased. Uh, one by Annie uh, on authenticity. Don't affect anyone else's style and, and understand clearly and believe the message you're trying to convey. That's her answer on authenticity, which I thought um, was great. And then to acknowledge Love Day, who made, uh, I think, a really succinct comment on the backgrounds uh, we choose and the backgrounds we use. Um, in promoting consistency in communication, I think we should put considerations also on our backgrounds as it depicts a sense of who we are and what we are communicating. So I think this is uh, great. And then the last question for, for today comes from Ginger. Um, she uh, wants some tips on profile photos that we use when we can't uh, turn on our cameras, if you know what I mean. So for example, this. 
Okay. And he wants some tips on taking them on. Um, it's not specified anymore. So any general tip, I guess. I would say ginger. Is that is the question? For, yeah, I would say ginger. Just uh, uh, remember if you are communicating with that picture to people you know and people you don't know. So what does your picture say about yourself to either? I mean, clearly people knowing you would not already how to read you. Uh, people don't know you. Uh, I would say, I don't know. I mean, I don't have uh, grandmas anymore, but in a way you could test this. This is what the grandma test. If you have a grandmother or someone who don't know you, just show different picture and test them. Nothing better than that. And it's not going to solve the problem. It's going to give you some, how to say, some feedback, some, uh, some elements to think about. And, and again, it's uh, why choosing color over black and white? There is, uh, there is no answer. Uh, color and black and white communicate uh, very differently and they impact audiences very differently. The reason why I have my, my picture is that being a photographer myself, that is one of the very few pictures that people, that someone took of me. So that's, I, I don't have many to choose. So I choose that one, that's all. So it's also an issue of opportunities and possibilities. Over to Katharina. Mm, thank you so much, uh, Massimiliano. Um, as I said, uh, that was the last question. I mean, you can always get in touch uh, email, classroom, in any way, shape or form. But I wanted to give the floor to Dragana because she has uh, some things to reveal regarding the exercises of the last four weeks um, and, and some of the challenges we post to you. And then also some of the um, next steps, basically. Over to you, Dragana. Thank you. Thank you, Katerina. And uh, once again, hello to all our participants. So uh, what I would like to tell you there are like, like a few things because this is going to be our last uh, class meeting in this course so just a few things just to be fair to all of you um, we'd like to say that actually to some of the technical challenges that you've been facing during your exercises were actually uh, made on purpose by us so uh, this is not to make your life miserable or just to to you know uh, don't let you, you know, uh, just present yourself the way you would, but we just wanted to simulate as much as possible different uh, possible trouble, troublesome situations that you might actually uh, encounter in your work. And uh, we actually wanted to see how would you react to those challenges. As you know, technology doesn't work perfect, not for any one of us, but this is not the, 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 the question of uh, perfect technology. This is just about, as in my opinion at least, this is the, the, the question of a human touch of how you would communicate whatever happens in your environment. What you can see, as Massimiliano said, what's in our frame, what's what's going on in audio, in video. So you, once you communicate this to your audiences as moderators, this is, is, I mean, this can actually bridge over probably the most difficult situations you might ever encounter. This again applies in face-to-face -face meetings. I mean, the same approach. So this is something that uh, I, I would actually personally like to remind you to always keep in mind. So the, the more you communicate appropriately and adequately given the situation, the better moderators you will, you will be. And uh, not that, that, uh, that uh, you know, we are blowing our own trumpets, but you know, I'm really so happy that uh, Katerina was able to moderate this session today. Because in my view, personally, she is a model uh, a moderator, really. I mean, with style, with grace, with accuracy and everything. So, um, and you know, so someone I, I personally like to learn from. And I actually, I to, to re, one, one reveal again, this, I asked her to moderate this session for you this time around. So, um, uh, another thing is that we have created a survey to the course that we would like you to uh, fill in. The survey is anonymous. I will share the link to it uh, in the chat. 
So I would like to ask you whenever you have the time to fill in the, the survey, which is going to help us improve this course. Please be perfectly honest, brutally honest uh, with your answers. We do appreciate any kind of feedback because this is going to help us address many issues that you found them particularly important in this course for future iterations. Uh, other than that, uh, 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 I would like to also ask you that uh, I will also write a class email to you. If you have any pending tasks, you have time until Tuesday next week, 23 UTC to complete them. After, then, after that, we will officially close the, the course and uh, you will hear more from me. And I would like to thank you once again for all the great work you've done, for all your time. And uh, we hope you've learned so much. I did, I know I did, and I hope uh, you did too. And of course, when whatever, if you have any questions, you need any kind of assistance, please get in touch with us. Uh, we have uh, one of the participants also, but uh, I'm just going to share this with all of you, who was actually asking about some particular features of uh, using Zoom, technical features, for example, how to create a poll and these kind of things. We do have our team uh, in, in our ConfTech lab who is actually uh, dedicated to work with whatever queries we may uh, are, you know, not only students, but people we work with may have. I will share their email, the team's email here in the chat. So please feel free if you have any technical questions about how to use not only Zoom, but any other virtual meeting platform, please just write to them and someone will get in touch with you very quickly, either with a very straightforward answer or just to, you know, make an appointment with you so you can test this, this kind of things. So thank you once again. Many thanks to Massimiliano and uh, to Katerina for, you know, running this wonderful session today. I think it's a wonderful wrap up and uh, please stay in touch and uh, thank you once again. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> bye, -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, thank you.